Edwin McCain. I'm a big fan. I tell you guys, when I was in college, I saved up all my money, and I went across, and OBU was the school where the rich kids went, and Edwin was playing the rich kids' school. <laughs> and I was like, I love Edwin McCain. Saved up my tickets. I got in the very back of the theater, and I watched him play for an hour and a half, him and a horn player. And it was really, I remember so much about it, Edwin, so I'm super ha- super glad you're here, and I don't have to pay for this show. Uh, I feel I feel like maybe maybe we we gypped you for only showing up with guitar and saxophone, but, <laughs> you know, I, we, we played in any uh, iteration back then. We could show up and play however. So, yeah. I was looking at your TikTok here. And that's that's actually what brought you here. It's so bizarre this whole thing how I got here. Anybody tells you that they have a plan in the music business, they're just lying. It's just <laughs> all accidental. It's a complete <laughs> accident. My entire life is a giant accident. I was uh, obviously a big fan growing up and then I'm flipping TikTok and I see you singing with people doing I'll be yeah. your c-. and I'm like holy crap. He's <laughs> He's playing. Let's get him on the show. <laughs> and so we call you, and you're like, "Yeah, I'll be right over." And here you, you drove over. I, I, I'm so I'm I'm just shocked. I was like, people are like, "What? Why are you going on there?" I was like, "I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea why they're." I was like, I, I I I feel like okay. I'm just gonna show up. I mean, yes to that because uh, I've literally you know I've just been, I've been out of the loop. I've just been home doing the you know homeschool thing with my kids, and I, I kind of made the decision to be home with my kids and 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 do the deal. And so all of a sudden, I'm back in the music business again. It's cool. <laughs> I'm going to play a couple of clips real quick in case you've been living in a rock, under a rock. Here's, here's I'll Be. And here is I Could Not Ask For More. And I could not ask for more. My favorite part right here. I could not ask for more. Yeah. Yeah. He goes hard. It is a little aggressive. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, that's that's begging to have a parody video <laughs> of, you know, somebody throwing a bouquet of roses at their girlfriend. Gah! <laughs> you know? Is it true, and you can true or false me on this, that you got your record deal because... Darius and the Hootie guys were like, you got to sign this guy. Pretty much, yeah. No, I was with I was with them when they got signed to Atlantic, and they basically said, yeah, we're bringing him with us. And they were like, yeah, whatever, we'll take him too. And, you know, they – and it was – yeah, it was a miracle. I, I spent my life trying to repay those guys for what they did for me. Um, and, and I say this all the time, like, if you haven't read Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers – Everyone, especially if you're in your 20s and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with your life, read that book because the importance of timing can't be overstated. Like, I worked really hard. I'll, I'll never deny that. But the when I was was as important as anything I did. Um, the timing was perfect. The Everybody was tired of grunge. They just got, they were so tired of staring into their lint filled belly buttons. And then Hootie and the Blowfish <laughs> came along and we were like, we have friends again. And yay. And whoever that guy is, yeah, we like him too. And that was it. You know, we were just really, really right place, right time. I went over and looked at your cameo. You charge $100 a cameo. Now, if they pay that, cause I, I'll be honest with you, pretty steep, Edwin. You think? A hundred bucks? <laughs> Snoop Dogg charges eight hundred. <laughs> okay. What does he do? Uh, everything. I'm singing to you. Yeah, okay, I'll that's sing what I was going to song to you. That's what I was going to ask. We just had Valentine's Day, where people oh, hitting you yeah. up, going, "You got to sing." I play the whole song too. Oh, the that's... whole song. You get almost five minutes worth of this guy. <laughs> Dedicated yes. straight to that person. Yes, my wife feels the same way you do about that. Just by the way, people pay you. For that. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> no, I just am looking at the prices of folks and 100 bucks. But if you're playing a song, I think you should raise the price. Yeah, I agree. So here's the thing. So I feel like, and this is something I say to the young musicians too. If you go out there and play for free for tip jars, then that's what your, you just told the world that's what your value is. You know, go, you, you charge for what you do. I mean, if you are good enough to be playing in public, then you're good enough to be paid for it. Well, you have, 
a rating of 5.0 out of 5. I got, I actually, I got a couple of bad reviews because at the beginning of TikTok, <laughs> I didn't really under, I mean, at the beginning of Cameo, I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. And I was literally like wearing a hard hat, getting ready to go get in an excavator. And I'd be like, hey, it's good to see you. And I'd do something stupid. And they were kind of expecting music and they were getting some construction worker. And I figured, I figured out real quickly, I was like, I'm not doing this right. So I got a couple of, uh, Who's this guy? Or I don't think this is the right thing. And <laughs> Did you get a lot of them for Valentine's Day because they because I'll be such a big love song? Yeah, this is my Super Bowl right now. Uh, Valentine's Day is is my this is it. This is it. I'm, I did ten yesterday, and I'll do ten again today. And and yeah, it's it's full on. I love it. It's great. So, I, I've been getting cameos from people. Like I I got I got my wife one from uh, uh, the dude that was uh, from Chips. Eric Estrada? No, no, the other one. Don't know him. Yeah, Eric yeah. Estrada's friend? <laughs> yeah, the other guy. <laughs> Not Eric Estrada, the other guy. Anyway, my wife's a big fan, so I got her a cameo. <laughs> Edwin McCain is here. He's going to play in a second. Well, actually, I'd like to do this. The TikTok that I saw him that, that brought him back into my life was him duetting with someone because he would play the first part of I'll Be, and they would sing the second. And I thought I was going to jump in and do it to do one too, but it just hurt. You should do it. No, I'm not, but Amy oh, is over here. Mm-hmm. And I think we can try this. I'll be Edwin okay. and Amy. All oh, right. boy. Okay. <laughs> I'll be captivated. Hang from your lips. Stared up on the gallows. Of heartache that hang from above. Crying shoulder, I'll be love suicide, and I'll be better when I'm older. I'll be the greatest fan of your life. Yes, you will. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's good. We like that. Hey, what does that mean, love suicide? By the way, like, help me. I've been singing it for 20 years. I don't know what it means. Uh, you know, I was pretty good at screwing up relationships in my early 20s, and that was sort of the explanation for it. Uh, you know, I would, the, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't do, I didn't do very well, so that was the end of them. So I, I, that was how the line came out. And it's funny because the record company and every producer I ever worked with tried to get me to remove that line, and I was just like I said, I'm. I have the oppositional defiance disorder, and I never, you know, it just refu- dug my heels in and refused to change the lyric, and 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 that actually ended up working in my favor because when Hillary Duff re-released the song on a soundtrack, they edited out that lyric, and I I was like, you can't do that, and I called my lawyers. I was like, they can't do that, can they? And they were like, no, they can't, and I was like, okay, so that's how I have my bus now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hillary. We we thought about changing the name to, of the bus to Hillary's Duff, but then. Yeah. Here's the question I have for you: In the most respectful way, when you're 80, how are you going to sing that hit? I hate 25 year old me. Put it in B. I thought. Oh yeah, you won't have a hard time singing it when you're 50. I don't know. I hopefully, you know what? I get. I was telling somebody the other day, like. I feel like I've crossed over into this new category where I go out to play. I still play 75 shows a year and I play these, you know, four or 500 seat rooms. Everybody's seated because they're all like me, you know. (laughs) And I started my, I I talked all the promoters into letting me start at seven. And they're like, oh, it's way too early. I'm like, trust me, we're going to sell these shows out. Seven, dude. I got I got guys my age high fiving me after shows. We're like, dude, seven p.m. start time is amazing. I get home, get rid of the babysitter. I got get, go, get up and go to work. It's fantastic. So, I get a lot of credit for just showing up and walking out there. Like people are like, oh look, he's still walking on two feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, it's it's kind of cool. You cross over to this new terror. You know, it used to be everybody's got their arms folded and they're waiting, and now I just get credit for being alive. It's great. <laughs> Edwin McCain is here. Uh, <laughs> such a funny guy. I got, like, I get it. Like, do you think if you wanted to, you could just stop everything else and just go tour? Like, there's because the '90s are so strong right now. It's starting to be like I'm realizing now. I'm like, I'm like, dude, this is there's my shot again. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. So let me just. I got it. This is a confessional. 
So I've got this little fighter in me, right, that wants to, like, go for it one more time. Like, my kids can see me go after it one more time. And I was with my daughter's class. We went on a fourth grade school trip in a bus full of fourth graders. And I was watching old Prince videos, like live Prince videos. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to put a band back together. And we're going to go on the road. We're going to put out a new record. We're going to do it again. And then by the time I had spent... I don't know, three hours with fourth graders at the state capitol building. I found myself sitting on a on a park bench feeding pigeons going, this is okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. I'm good. <laughs> but but here's the thing. So I've been talking with Lee Bryce about doing a record with him, and, and there's, you know, there have been people been try, it's like nudging me, trying to get me to do it again. But name one artist that's ever been in the situation I'm in that has ever actually come back and release something, and everybody was like, yay, new stuff. Like, nobody <laughs> does that. Like, I'm guilty of it. I don't want to hear new ACDC. I want to hear Back in Black. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 but inside, secretly inside, I really wish I could just do it one more time. Like, put out a record, put a big tour together, and spend all the money on lighting and sound and blow stuff up and have tractor trailers. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it would be great. I mean, listen, you're, you're a South Carolina guy. I mean... I think you could do a song with a Lee Bryce. Yeah, I mean, I did a song with him on his on his last record, but I mean, I'm I'm talking about like full bore like a record. Make well, a you did a song on his last. Wait, you did, hold on, let me stop. You did a song on his last record. Yeah, yeah. Who Is that song? Uh, <laughs> what was that song? Hey. Uh, Little Bird. Uh, I have so, a story to tell. It's, that's the song we wrote. Wow. Yeah. I guess I need to go listen to that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> Honestly, can I can I tell this story? This is kind of embarrassing. Go he, for it. I'm, I might ruin my friendship with him. <laughs> so, it's a friend of mine named Philip Lamons was like, "Dude, Lee Bryce wants to write with you." I was like, "Who's Lee Bryce?" He was like, "You're an idiot." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And I was like, "Cause I'm so out of it. I really didn't. I knew. I kind of knew Lee's name, but I didn't know. I'm, I'm totally out of touch. I got nothing. I mean, I'm sitting at home watching Phineas and Ferb, <laughs> and." Uh, <laughs> And and he, and and so Philip gets me here, and I meet Lee, and I'm like, God dang, man, this guy's. I mean, talk about a voice and just a writer and everything. And we wrote this song in, you know, a couple of hours, and just had a great time. And and then um, and he had been to a bunch of my shows early on, and he was a fan or whatever. And and so we just kind of had this weird friendship that started from me being a hermit, living in South Carolina. So it, it's just. It's just been kind of a happy accident, and then all this sort of, and here I am again, you know, sitting here talking to you, which is weird. Uh, Mitchell Tenpenny, right? So I, I got like a teenage girl about that song, Drunk Me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, this song's amazing. And I had him come and sit in with us. Like, but don't you think, like, this new generation of musicians are so much better than I know they're way better than I was at that age. Like, I look back, I see kids on TikTok, and I'm like, holy God, like, they're fantastic. Like, there's some really great, like, technical players. And and I watch them kind of doing their thing on the TikTok, and I think every single person doing that needs to go out and open a guitar case on a street corner and busk for a little while. Which is that's, what you did. Yeah, that's the only thing they're missing is this is this sort of fearlessness to go out in front of people and fall down and make mistakes and, and but learn how to make that emotional connection because you just can't do it by yourself with a camera in your room you got to you have to go out there and play gigs and you got to play gigs in front of hostile audiences too i mean yeah, you can't you can't just wait for everybody to love you on the internet you got to go out there and play for people that didn't didn't show up to see you like, spend some time as an opening act. That's a really good thing to do, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, get out of my yard. <laughs> my, my, my final question for you, Edwin. Have you ever been at a karaoke place or where they're singing karaoke and someone gets up and sings your song while you're sitting there? I got up and sang my song oh. at a karaoke place <laughs> in New Jersey. And uh, I was like, this is going to be awesome. This is back when I was like, you're like okay, like, I want to do a whole series on TikTok of douchey things I did in my 20s and now like, I'm totally embarrassed about now. But I was like... I'm going to, like, blow these people away. They're not going to be expecting me to walk into this karaoke place in New Jersey and sing my own song, right? So I go up there and I sing it. And the guy that was running the karaoke goes, yeah, that's pretty good. It's not as good as the original guy, though. 
<laughs> they didn't even recognize me. Everybody just kind of blew it off. Yeah. Listen, you guys go follow Edwin on TikTok. It's the Edwin McCain on Instagram and TikTok. And if you pay a hundred bucks for a cameo, which I think we should raise the price now, yeah, yeah. he will sing the song. Yeah. He won't I, even be in a construction hat anymore. Yeah, I've actually sung other songs too. Like what's funny is people send me cameo requests and then I gotta go learn somebody else's song and sing it to them. Oh, uh, would you do Hold My Hand by Hootie Edwin? No, thank you. <laughs> I, you know, absolutely. I don't I don't I I don't know. Is there a royalty I have to pay on that? I don't ask. You don't ask. You don't know you did it wrong. Edwin McCain, hey, it's been a real treat to spend a couple days with you, honestly. I know we spent some time, too, together. Thank you. Um, Just was a big fan then. I'm glad to be a big fan again. I just, it's crazy how things come back around in life and loved having you here. I think you guys would all say the same thing, right? Yeah, of course. This is awesome. So fun. Great interview. Great, great performance. And when you're 80 and you have to take it down a couple, uh, and you want to come and sing it again. I'm going to be like Motley Crue and just play the tracks. (laughs) Just sing, sing to tracks. You could do that. <laughs> they do that. Well, pop stars do. There's a track playing, and they sing uh, over and under it, and everything else. Oh, and like the last. The, I went. To, I'm a huge crew fan, and I went to the the. You know, they had more fire and tracks underneath there. I was like, oh, okay, this is what you do. Yeah, <laughs> and nobody faults them for it. Go for it. People were there for the experience. Absolutely spectacular. All right. There he is, Edwin McCain. Yeah. Nice job. We're back in a second. Thank you. Yeah,